Boys and girls, another video for you today, paint transfer. There's far more to it than you think. I'm standing here with Sean, Blue Tech Mobile Detailing. Mm -hmm. I've been mentoring Sean for approximately... Like five months. Five months now? Yeah. Okay, so just to clarify, there's a difference between someone that hires me to do consulting, someone that hires me to do teaching, and someone that wants mentoring. So Sean does not pay me for my tutelage. Mm. Okay, so I'm so limited on time, but I help him out as much as possible. I've been mentoring him. He is working on this car today in my very neighborhood. Mm. And whose car is this? Uh, the guy who's doing your house? Yes, the general contractor that is doing the, the entire remodel, or I should say, we are doing an entire remodel on our house. So this is my neighbor, he's my general contractor. It's an 05 Hummer H2. You're doing a full detail yeah. on it. Yeah. The customer, my buddy and general contractor, Ken, said, hey Darren, I've got some damage on the corner of my car. Uh, I was backing into the garage and there's this common thing that happens to a lot of us. We hit things, it's called accidents generally, mm. and we get this thing called paint transfer. So on the corner of this rear fender, we have some paint transfer. So like, as Sean and I were talking before we started shooting this video, you can take any subject in life, never mind detailing, and suddenly a very simple subject that you think is very simple, it can just ripple into this endless uh, array of questions because for example, paint transfer. What is it? How does it happen? How do you remove it? Once you remove it, it's like, oh my gosh, there's scratches. Hey Darren, where's that video? Mm -hmm. I removed the paint transfer, but now how do I deal with the scratches? So everything ripples into another subject, which is what makes my head spin because it's like, okay, how do I deliver a message that's useful? So this message is intended for a wide audience. If you're a car owner and you have paint transfer, we're gonna help you identify it and, and how to deal with it. If you're a detailer and now you've got to understand what it is, like Sean here, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, paint transfer, what do I do? Oh my gosh. It's like, okay, he needs to understand it in order to perhaps fix it for his customer. The customer will likely understand it very little to not at all, so he's going to have to be able to commu communicate to the customer. So this is, I guess, if we reduce it down to three different types of audiences. Mm -hmm. A car owner, like yourself maybe, a beginner detailer that needs to understand it, and also a beginner detailer that needs to help the customer understand it. So that's our goal today. With that said, let's take a look. I'm gonna bring you in and show you exactly what I'm talking about. And boys and girls, here we have the paint transfer on the rear of this fender. This is simple. He was backing his Hummer into the garage and tagged one of the cupboards in his garage. Many ways paint transfer can happen. Now that you've seen the paint transfer and what we're dealing with, let's define it. What is paint transfer? The easiest definition I can come up with is when an unwanted type of material is now transferred in many, many ways that it's possible onto an area of your car. So something has transferred. The reason they call it paint transfer is because often the material being transferred onto your car is some type of paint. Whether it's the paint from the garage door frame, a shopping cart which has rubberized bumpers to it, so that would actually be called plastic transfer. So it's kind of a generalization to say paint transfer. It's just that generally it is paint that has been transferred to your car because you have hit something or something has hit you. Let's say another car taps up against your car and some of the paint from their car in the process of hitting your car is transferred to your car. So that's the simplification. The complexity of the problem then becomes, okay, I've got transfer, but did it do damage? If it did do damage, what kind of damage? What is the extent of the damage? Can that damage be removed? 
I know how to remove the paint transfer, but what about the damage? So this is where a, a, a subject that's like this suddenly grows to be something like this. Oh, and by the way, in case you haven't noticed, yeah. I'm wearing the new Auto Fetish t-shirts with the new revised logo mm -hmm. that yes, I designed it myself. I do all my designs. And as a rule, every six months to two years, I change my logo up. Yeah. Some people say you would never do that. And I say that I like to do it. I like to keep things fresh and updated. Mm -hmm. I know it kind of goes counter to many people's mm -hmm. logic about branding and keeping the brand without diluting the brand. A video for another time. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's the back. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's a play on words. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be offended by it. Mm -hmm. Some of you will find it, I don't know what. I'll let them figure it out. Yep. Okay. so. For all you ADD guys, I could easily remove this paint transfer. I know exactly where he hit. It's a painted cabinet in his garage. I could easily remove the paint transfer in probably 20 seconds or less. I could actually remove it in 10 seconds or less with the right chemical. I'm not going to do that because then people will go into freak out mode and say, oh my gosh, I would never use that chemical on my car because you have all these detail wannabes that will come in and say, oh, that guy's a hack because you would never use that chemical on the car. I know it's acceptable and safe. They don't. So they're going to confuse the moment or confuse you if you're a beginner. So I'm not going to even address that. I'm going to address strategies that are a little more realistic. So. Once again, the transfer is easy to remove. There's different ways to go about it. Not all transfers created equal. That's like I say about virtually everything in life. Not all paint is created equal. Not all clear coat is created equal. Some is soft, some is hard. Not all paint is the same. Some is latex water-based, some may be oil-based. This could actually be rubber or plastic transfer. So. Once again, it's not all created equal. So there's going to be some basic rules that you can use and follow that will hopefully give 99% of you success. I'm going to introduce you to a couple tricks that you will now find pervasively all over the internet called YouTube. One of them is my magnifier. These are called reader glasses. So my trick and my logic behind this is this, and it's very useful when it comes to paint transfer because you're dealing with your paint and you want to be able to see all the nuances. So what I do is I enhance my normal vision with readers. It's like putting a magnifying glass up to something. This allows me to scrutinize the area at a magnified level. So the intent is this, is that if I can not only look at it closer in a magnified way, that allows me to dissect it and to strategize better than unaided vision. Also, I know that if I can perform at a higher degree of a magnif magnification at a higher degree, that when my customer comes into the equation and now he's looking at it with what's called the unaided eye, I know that it's going to be better. So I can achieve a higher level of per perfection by using these magnification reader glasses. So that's one of my tricks. The second trick that I introduced years ago is the magic eraser. And yet again, I'm still waiting for the check from, I think it's a Johnson and Johnson company for them to send me a royalty check. Cause I guarantee I've sold a lot of these because I've introduced it into the world of car care. You just need to understand the limitations of these things. They are very, very effective and they feel soft and spongy. So they are kind of insidious, meaning you think, oh, what damage could that ever do? You just know that it's very effective. Well, if you rub on virtually any surface long enough with one of these and hard enough, it will abrade the surface, including car paint. I have abraded or worn off the chrome in some of my household fixtures using this repeatedly to clean the house. So now that we're getting all brand new chrome fixtures, I no longer will be using these like I did before. Yes, I still will be using them. I'll just be using them differently. So this is my go-to 
as my first responder when it comes to removing paint transfer. This is simple green. It's diluted down, probably 10 parts to one. It's Sean's, he let me use it. I turned them on as simple green because it's a very effective, economical product. Basic microfiber cloth. What I have done is I have bisected this, split it into two so I can uh, show you what I do up here with just this versus down there with some of these other products that you see lined up over here to my right, your left. Hopefully this is showing up. I've dissected it or I more accurately, I've bisected it. I'm gonna be working on here. My magic eraser, my simple green. Simple green is not gonna hurt paint. I'm working in direct sunlight, so that's where you have to apply the context of the situation you're working in. So if I pay, spray it directly on the paint, it's going to dry quicker because it's exposed to the sun. You can spray it directly to the paint. You can spray it directly to the pad. This is going to help the magic eraser break down the transfer easier than just using water. So what I do is I rub and I am applying what I would consider moderate pressure. And guess what? Right there, without getting in front of the camera and blocking the, the uh, view, it looks like I have 100% removal that quickly. Because this is light colored paint, it's not even gonna show up in contrast on this white sponge. What you might notice though, is that there's no yellow paint. Some of you that don't know the difference between what's called single stage and two stage paint will think, well wait, what if I'm removing some paint when I'm doing that? Well, this has a clear coat on this paint that makes it a two stage paint because it literally is clear there would be no color that would come off on this if in fact I was taking some color with it. Now, the simple answer is that for 99% of you, the job is done. Now you apply some wax or go about your business as you would in the detailing process because the transfer is gone. But for the overly analytical, the overly obsessive, this is where I'm gonna go in with my readers and I'm going to scrutinize it. Now with the readers, I can see that there's still some subtle traces of transfer. I just need to go in a little bit more with the understanding that the more I rub on this, the more likelihood I'm going to abrade this paint. But yellow is actually a rather forgiving color when it comes to swirl marks and spider webbing and wash scratch. So right here, now I have 100% removal of that mark. But if you're gonna do, if, if you wanna go level 10, I have to accept that I have abraded, even though it's not showing up in this specific lighting, I have abraded this surface I know that for certain. I just haven't abraded it significantly. So once again, for most of you, you could stop there. Really, that would require one tool because you could get the same results with just water and a magic eraser. It could be that simple. But because there's many people that don't know about the magic eraser until perhaps this moment, that's where I'm going to default to one of these other products that are so common. So that's your ultra, ultra simple answer. And yes, it's very effective. But because a lot of you will go into paint scratch removal, transfer removal, you might find yourself down the rabbit hole of a product like these. Uh, little scratch repair, scratch doctor, scratch X 2.0. These I'm a big fan of. In my professional world, I'm a big fan of them mostly because of the packaging. They're easy to haul around. They don't take up much room. They have mild, and I stress mild abrasives to them. Honestly, I don't know which product other than this Turtle Wax product. So if I had to pick one between these products, I would pick Turtle Wax because I know for certain that this has mild abrasives in it. So that's the one I would choose. 
I like carrying these because they serve so many purposes. In this case, the removal of paint transfer. Since many of you will be following that trail and because these can serve many, many uses, I think that they're appropriate and very recommended to have one of these around, whether you're a car owner or even a professional detailer. Because once again, I can whip this in and out of my van. For example, let's say I'm doing a full detail on a car. This is, a little, this is directed towards the detailers out there. You're not doing full paint correction on a car. What you're doing is you're decontaminating, decontaminating the paint and probably waxing it, hopefully, and that's it. But what if Johnny customer comes out and he points out a little nick or a little scratch on the car, but you're essentially done. Do you really want to bust out all your stuff so you can make Johnny customer happier in the moment? So what I do is like, hey, you know what? I didn't quote you to do paint correction or to go around and scrutinize every square inch of your car, but let me just bust something out and take care of it for you very quickly. So that's why a product like this is very useful because I can whip this out rather than my entire polishing kit, do a little finessing in the moment, see what results I can produce for Johnny customer and make him happier without consuming a bunch of my time that I haven't quoted for. So there's my pitch. With that said, let's see how this performs at the lower half of this. Now I can tell you that it is working, but I'm rubbing a lot harder. And, and, and the reason I'm rubbing a lot harder with this than the Magic Eraser is really just based on experience. Because I've worked with the Magic Eraser for so many years, and I've worked with these products for so many years, I already know the limitations of them. But a lot of you beginners won't. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring you into my world because you can't feel and sense the pressure that I'm applying. I know that I put a lot more pressure on that than I did this because I knew that this would actually require more effort manually than this would. This is at a level of braiding the paint similar to this, but this is what you would call desired abrasions. It's like scratch removal in general. At a basic level, you remove scratches by putting progressively finer and finer scratches into the paint or the area until you have desired results. What that means is this, is that you are literally scratching your way to success. You introduce uh, deeper, more aggressive scratches, at your starting point, and then you reduce it down to finer and finer scratches to the point where optically, as in vision, you cannot see anything but perfected paint or perfected area. So the abrasions that this will put in are not going to be necessarily wanted because the abrasions or scratches that this will do will actually enhance and bring out shine and luster. So it's kind of a mind F. You think, well, why? It sounds like you're describing the same thing, Darren, and at a level I am. It's just that they really are different materials. This is a type of a polish slash compound. This is a cleaning pad. So even though they're still scratching at a microscopic level, the end result will be different. This will remove, so that's wanted, but it will also abrade, which is unwanted. So for a lot of you, the new conclusion might be like, oh, based on what I'm picking up, Darren, which is what I'm trying to put down, is that if I reach for a product like this, I can accomplish two things in one go, which is the answer. Because I can remove the transfer. Yes, I may have to re rub a little harder but now my paint is actually polished and shinier. Whereas in here, if I'm gonna overly, or, or if I'm gonna become overly scrutiny, that's not even a word. If I'm gonna become overly critical in this moment, I would need to follow up with a polish like this. So this would be my first choice. But let me add complexity 
more than I already have. This would be my ultimate choice because this is a professional grade polish. I know it has abrasives in it, the good kind of abrasive, abrasives, the kind of abrasives that you will do to correct, enhance your paint with a buffer or by hand. So this is a product that is effective and I recommend it definitely but I accept its limitations. It's not packaged to be used to do your entire vehicle. You might be able to, but it's not really packaged that way. This, it's a small size, it's kind of a sample size. You can find it on my website. So this would be a way for you to deal with things like this. This size is very transportable, but I buy it in a quart size because this is the product I use to do paint correction. So that's where you have to figure out in your world, okay, am I a car owner, a detailer, a wannabe detailer, as in I want to become a professional, therefore I need to start strategizing how I buy products so to minimize the, the, the damage of the separating of money from my pocketbook. So this is where you have to figure out what that winning balance is for you. Because this, I left a little spot here, so now I just contradicted myself because originally I said I'm going to bisect this as in two. Now I'm going to trisect it, which I don't even think that word exists. And I'm going to use this to remove. And once again, because it's a, actually I didn't have to rub that hard at all. <laughs> um, and I'm not surprised because this is, where'd it go? This is a true professional grade polish not a compound, there's a difference. I will begin to educate you guys on the difference. There is a massive difference that most of you don't understand. A video for another time. So, here we have the transfer completely removed. Now, if I inspect it with my magnifying readers, I can begin to really scrutinize it and say, okay, either I myself expect a higher level of perfection or I'm dealing with a customer that has a very developed and a very critical eye. Nothing short of perfection will work for this moment. That's where I'm going to reach for a buffer. That's where I'm going to make this video even more complex. So at this point, I'm hoping that you have come to either a conclusion or maybe even a new conclusion as to which product perhaps represents the winning balance to you. Do you keep it ultra simple? I mean, honestly, in my arsenal, I have everything. Magic Racer, I don't need three of these. I would just pick the uh, Turtle Wax specifically, and no, Turtle Wax is not paying me to do this. Even more specifically, I would pick this product because I know that this allows for much more diversity in use. So this is going to be a two-parter because at this point, based on the customer, this may be unacceptable. And every, like I said at the beginning, every transfer moment is different. You may find that you have removed the transfer and realize that there is, in fact, permanent damage. Permanent meaning damage that will remain unless you figure out how to fix it, correct it, or remove it. So part two, I'm going to take off at this moment with part two and show you and introduce you to the next level of correction, which is the use of a buffer and products. So by all means, tune in to part number two. If not, always check the description box below. And boys and girls, we'll see you on the next video.